Thanks for tuning in to today's video. We'll be talking about interview tips from our Miro recruiters for you. Welcome to the Life at Miro channel. Let's get started. My first tip would be be prepared to talk about your salary expectations. We would like to see how much you value yourself as a professional. And it's also being mindful basically of both of our times. Like if there's too much of a gap in what expectations are and the budget that we have for this particular role, it doesn't really make sense to make you go through all these interviews and not you know, have any result at the end of it. So that's why already in this first conversation, it's really important to kind of know what, what we're all about. And always research before our conversation. Research about the company, the product, our culture, and come prepared with questions to us. An interview is not uh, one way. Um, we want to see if you have the right skill set for what we're looking for, uh, but you also want to see if the company that you're joining is the right one for you. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, yeah, sometimes it's really sit back and relax and let the recruiter do the talking, but yeah, that's not always how it works. Uh, so just having that general two-way conversation, it really just helps get the most out of probably 30 minutes uh, you're just going to have in that first conversation. And we do have allocated time for your questions at the end of the conversation. So be mindful of these 30 minutes that we have together, uh, because in the last five or 10, uh, we will give you the chance to ask any questions you have for us. So we expect them and we are happy to answer your questions. And if we don't know something, we will make sure to uh, follow up back after our, our conversation. For interviewing in general, I would say, especially at the recruiter screen stage, uh, in the start, often it's asked about a short introduction or tell something about yourself, depending on the recruiter. Here, I would definitely advise to keep it short. Like, don't give a 15 to 20 minute uh, conversation about your entire life, starting from, you know, when you were born. Um, but definitely focus on what you, can you already tackle. We have limited time. Uh, we said it before, there's maybe 30 minutes that we want to get through and want to get deeper than just, you know, the profile. Um, we've seen your resume, it's in front of us. So we already know, you know, what you've more or less done. So we want to dive deeper into that. That said, we probably all are going to have the similar questions or question marks on our mind, like what's the reason for us to have this call? What's your reason to move? What are you really looking for in your next step? Uh, and that's something that I would say, if you tackle that in your short introduction already, it will save time for the rest of the conversation. I think another thing that's really important, just see the recruiter screen also as an actual interview. Sometimes it's forgotten that, you know, if there's no relevancy for the role in that first recruiter screen, you can also get rejected. Um, and it's sometimes seen as introductory call, I'm going to move forward anyways, but that's not always the case. So make sure you also treat it as such. One of the other things is it's a very first introduction, but normally the recruiter you're going to see for plenty of times, at least in the mirror process. Um, we have prep calls for next uh, steps in the interview from technical assessments to our behavioral um, interviews as well with the team and with the hiring manager. So definitely make sure you lay it all out in that first interview with us. You will be working very closely with the recruiter and your recruiter coordinator. So be prepared to share your availability about the next steps of the interview, like which days and what times would you be available and state any urgency that there is from your side. If there is any urgency, we will take that into consideration. On that note, that can be anything personal from a holiday where you won't be available for us, but it can also be other processes, right? We do want to take this into account. We want to get you to basically the final stage and we'd rather speed up our process to meet you know, other competing processes rather than you know, having you lose out and not be at that end stage to really compare what is the better opportunity for you. The recruiter is going to have a couple of questions that they would like to ask you to better assess your experience and they are normally based on the job description. So it's a good tip for you to review the job description before your interview. Totally agree. Um, before the interview, it's, uh, it's really a good idea to think of some specific examples uh, of work that you've done in the past that align to the points outlined in the job description. Another tip to keep in mind is to avoid talking about your personal life. This is not being assessed during the process and can actually lead to unconscious bias. That's a good point. I think unconscious bias is in everyone. Um, so if you share too much personal information, uh, it can lead to that interviewer uh, becoming biased in some way. 
Another thing to keep in mind is that you should be prepared to talk about your motivation. If you applied yourself, talk about why, and even if a recruiter reached out to you, it's good for you to share what made you decide to jump in the introductory call. Exactly. It's really important to understand that the recruiter is also part of this interview process. Um, so make sure to show yourself, show your best self during that first interview and throughout the whole process. And remember to be authentic. We want to get to know the best version of you that is also authentic to yourself. Going back to your motivation, um, it's good for you to keep in mind uh, that salary growth should not be the only driver for you to be participating in an interview process. Before going into the interview with the recruiter or with an interviewer, uh, it's important to really think about your three main drivers for considering a new opportunity. We really want to get to know what is important for you and the entire process will be driven around that. And even your questions will potentially be about the things that are driving you into participating in an interview process. The questions that you ask the recruiter, the hiring manager, and even a team round getting to know your peers, everything will be super important and defined by the very three drivers that you share with us at the beginning. When you're thinking about your answers, it's important for you to not be uh, high level or theoretical. We're looking for evidence of your past experience. And that's what we're looking for in each question that we share. Instead of sharing something like, oh, uh, I've done this in the past. Oh, this is how I would do this. Share something that you already did uh, in your previous experience. This would be extremely helpful for us to really get to know you. And actually, the STAR method could be a great way to do that. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, the STAR methodology is a great way to show what you've done in the past uh, and the impact that this work has had. For those who don't know what the STAR method is, um, so STAR stands for Situation, Task, Action and Results. So the situation, you're really explaining, you know, what was the situation? What were you doing at the time? Um, and the task is more aligned to, you know, what was the task you were undertaking? What were you looking to achieve and complete? Uh, and then we go into the action. Um, so what action did you actually take to, to complete this task to, to have that kind of uh, result? Um, and then we lead on to the, the actual result itself. Um, so what was the result? What was the impact of the work that you did? And also be prepared to reflect on that as well. And think of this as an extra R, reflection. If you could go back, what would you have done differently in this scenario? And this is actually also related to one of Miro values, which is learn, grow, and drive change. We are really interested about your learning mindset. So really think about the last one when you're sharing your answers. And that's our last tip for today. If you'd like more videos like this, please let us know in the comments below. And if you find this content useful, please subscribe and hope to see you in the next video.